What's poppin' peeps? Team Money up in the house. <clears throat> I'm actually shooting this uh, video um, for my car because I wanted to smoke a cigarette and uh, I'm really tired. I had a long day at work today, so um, my apologies for uh, getting this review in so late. But um, And also the picture quality is shitty because all I have is the light on up there. So um, Anyway, let's get right to this. Uh, so the video I chose to review uh, for my fourth review, I think week 148 on the podcast, on the podcast, on the Body Bags channel, is um, The Redeemer, Son of Satan. And uh, this is a film that was put out um, by Code Red. It's from 1978. Um, uh, from reading about it, I got the impression that it was kind of big in the um, the drive through or the drive-in scene. Um kind of like a grindhouse type feel uh, to it, and um, other than that, it kind of just fell into obscurity afterwards, and uh, it wasn't until the VHS days that it was picked up by some unknown comp distributor, and then Code Red grabbed a hold of it um, and put it out on DVD, and uh, it's now out on Blu-ray from Code Red, and um, with the exception of one added scene after the shotgun blast, um, this is for people who, who care, um, I would recommend just keeping the DVD. The upgrade, uh, the transfer is basically the exact same as the DVD. You don't get a trailer and you don't get a um, an opening screen um, or a menu screen. So it just cuts right to it. So it's a really shitty uh, attempt or excuse for a Blu-ray. But um, this is fine. I actually watched this. This is the version that I watch even though I have the Blu-ray. Um, so. So this film from 1978 was directed by Konstantin S. Gawkis. I don't know who that is, a uh, one-time director maybe. Um, it stars basically a bunch of unknown actors, so I'm not even going to... I'll spare their names. You're not... Nobody really probably... Damien Knight, Gene Arnett. Um, but, the, but the guy who plays the Redeemer uh, is uh, T.K. I'm sorry, T.G. Finkbinder. And uh, he's probably of note. He's... Um, saves the film really um, so basically with this film this film's similar to if you guys have seen Horror High from the late 70s I believe and um, Slaughter High it actually reminds me a lot of in the sense that it's about a group of six um, I don't know students um, that reunite their the actual the alternate title of this film is Class Reunion Massacre so hence um, the title they reunite uh, they're invited to a class reunion, and I think it's a school. And um, they get there, and they find all this nice food, and everything's, um, you know, ready, nicely sorted, and ready for them to enjoy their uh, reunion. But there's nobody there; it's just the six of them. So um, it isn't long before the killer, who is played by uh, T. G. Finkbinder, um, he's actually a preacher, and <clears throat> there's a weird in the beginning of the film. There's like, the intro scene is this child that rises out of the water. They show like just this lake, it's still, and then all of a sudden a child reaches his hand out and comes out of the water. And I think that's supposed to resemble the child is the devil. And I think T.G. T, uh, Finkbender kind of like trades his soul with the devil um, to become the redeemer and, and, uh, and kill these six... Um, college kids or whatever, they're not college kids, high school reunion kids, anyway, so something like that, so the kid portrays the devil, I know that much, um, as he's in the intro, and then at the end of the movie, it shows him going back into the lake, in the water to resemble, like, the deed has been done, and the devil is going back underwater, so, aside from that, it's pretty straightforward, um, they go to the reunion, they get murdered, now the awesome thing about this film is that it's not just a straight up slasher killer, um, the killer actually dons several different disguises. Um, one being the Grim Reaper himself, who's on the cover here. Another is a bird hunter. Another is a clown, which is really creepy. You can see how the back here, I know it's terrible quality. But you can see the clown right there. And, um, and uh, basically, like, he, he creates all these different ways to distract the... Uh, teenagers, I, can't, I don't know what to call them, the group of people, victims really, 
um, to kind of get them alone, and then he kills them one by one in really, like, creative ways. I'm not going to get into the kills, because it'll kind of spoil the movie, because the kills are really creative, and, um, but I'll just say there's, like, drownings, there's shootings, um, there's, uh, head stabbings, uh, um, and, um, it's, it's awesome, but there's one scene in particular where the lesbian, so, so the cat, so it's your typical, you've got the tramp, the lesbian, the, the rich snob, the jock, and basically, um, he's seeking, um, I don't want to say vengeance, but, um, he's killing all these people because they've committed sins, that's kind of like the underlying, there's definitely a religious aspect to the film, hence the killer is a preacher, um, and so he's killing them for all their sins, basically, and that's why he's invited up them on this outing reunion um, to kill them for their sins. So there's one scene in, in the bathroom where he's dressed as the clown and he um, kills the lesbian. Um, and it's a really, really cool scene. My favorite scene in the movie is probably the dancing marionette scene. You can actually see the marionette on the back there. Again, I apologize. Picture quality's bad, but he's right up there. Um, that doesn't really do it justice, but... And there's an awesome, like, um dialogue, uh, the preacher goes on about, uh, I don't know, I, I can't even really think of it, but it's an awesome scene, it's kind of like, takes place in like a theater in the school or whatever, and they all gather, and then he's like, puts on the show on, on a stage, and there's, a, and while he's like, preaching to them about their sins and, um, <clears throat> their souls being to blame for, uh, the corruption in their lives or whatever, uh, there's, like, this dancing marionette that's, like, kind of, um, and every kill has, like, involves, like, a trick, so there's something that they're kind of preoccupied with, something to distract them from, um, you know, their, their ultimate faith, which is going to be, um, in that, in the, in the case of the theater scene, uh, with the dancing marionette, um, a knife kind of drops down, and I don't want to get, uh, <laughs> somebody is basically, a knife goes through somebody's head, we'll just say that. So, anyway, it's awesome. I really love The Redeemer. It's a really, the soundtrack of this movie is amazing. Very creepy, very 80s, um, synth, like, uh, eerie, though. It goes really well with, with the movie. There's just a lot of qualities that make this movie stand out to me from your average uh, slasher film. Just the fact that the killer is a preacher, the religious aspects, the kills, the creative ways in which people are killed. There's always some sort of, like, act that goes on right before somebody's killed off. It's not just, like, or speech or something. It's not just, like, a killer walking around stabbing and, and killing a person one by one. It's a lot more than that. You've got the whole child supernatural aspect with the devil. Um, definitely has, like, an underlying supernatural aspect, I'd say. Um, but, yeah, so that's basically it. Again, I'd go with this DVD. The transfer is a little rough on it. Um, it's from a 30, uh, I guess a 1981 35 millimeter grindhouse print. This movie, like I said, was kind of lost and went into obscurity for years. So uh, apparently Code Red had a difficult time um, putting this on the DVD, the print, I guess. Whatever they had to work with was shitty. And you can see that. But it almost gives it, you know, that rough feel, um, that budget. For what it is, uh, it's, it's, you know, it kind of adds to the atmosphere of the film overall. Um, Again, I just would note that Finkbender, um, the guy who plays the preacher killer, um, does an amazing performance. Um, the fact that he can play and kind of like um, morph all these different roles from the from the clown to the preacher to the Grim Reaper, and he's actually acting. It's not just walking and killing, like I said. He does an amazing job. He really carries the film, um, and it's just got this really creepy, eerie vibe to it. Um, grindhouse feel, almost like the quality of this video, right guys? <laughs> um, I just said it, yeah, it's a pretty darn solid performance, particularly the way he changes his voice. Um, he does some awesome voice changes from character to character. And, um, yeah, that's about it, guys. Uh, I'd say uh, The Redeemer from 1978, a.k.a., uh, well, The Redeemer, Son of Satan, a.k.a. Class Reunion Massacre. Um, is worth a pickup. I'd say if you're going to get one Code Red film, this is one of my, probably right up there in my top three Code Red releases, just because I love the film so much. It's not going to be for everyone, but I feel like the majority of people who can appreciate a good slasher, um, a creative slasher, really at that, um, will enjoy it. So, so yeah, I highly recommend this one. 
it's it's one of my favorites. It's it's also got a good re rewatch value in my opinion. It's a film that I can always, for whatever reason, this and um, um, the Ghost Keeper, another Code Red release, are two that I always I can put on anytime, and, and I love watching them. So that's it, guys. Again, sorry about the quality of the video, and also that it's so late. But um, this has been my review. Um, it's either 158 or 148, I think, for the week. Um, thanks for watching Body Bags. I'm DOTD1986, a.k.a. Turry. I'll catch you next Wednesday. Peace.